evening. This is uh, Wednesday night again, and I'm going to talk tonight on the subject, the battleground of the mind. Now, uh, I'm meeting uh, with you tonight in our Fusion uh, Youth Building, and uh, of course, this week is a very week, busy week for uh, our church. We have um, uh, Living Word Christian Academy uh, had that a lot of things going on, graduation. Then we have the Noah's Ark daycare graduation tomorrow night. We're expecting probably about 100, 150 people. So it's going to be very busy this week. So uh, since we're doing some things in the sanctuary, I decided to go ahead and speak to you in the teen center, our fusion building. And so let's continue talking about uh, the battleground of the mind. You know, uh, the mind is the ultimate, it's the ultimate battlefield of life. You know, uh, the Lord and, and your flesh and, and the devil wants to take control of your mind. But don't give your flesh control. Don't give the devil control. Let God control your thoughts. Give him part and give him all of your mind. Now, why does the battle rage there? There's a battle against your thought life. Because the Bible says, as a man think of in his heart, so is he. You know, remember Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, what Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. See, Paul learned how to control his thought life. He did that because there, in, in um, verse 11, it says, not that I speak in respect of what, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am in, there were to be content. Now again, Paul learned it through his thought life. If you don't have peace, then what are you thinking? If you're not content, then what are you thinking? First Peter chapter 5, verse 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same affliction are accomplished in your brethren that in the world. What he is saying here, no matter what you are going through, there's many people in the world that went through the same thing and going through the same thing that you're going through. And they overcame it. So you will overcome it too. So uh, he roams about to devour the weak by setting destructive thoughts into the mind, which the Bible calls the fiery darts. See, we have thoughts all the time, some good thoughts, bad thoughts some mature thoughts, some immature thoughts. But you have to cast down those thoughts and every high imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bring down that imagination and cast away those thoughts. Ephesians 6, 16 says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. See, you have to guard your thought. You have to guard your thoughts about what others see. Don't listen just to anybody because you hear people talk every day, maybe some of your friends, relatives, or employees, employees, whatever. You know, guard, uh, guard your heart. Jesus says, take heed what you hear and take heed how you hear. Make sure that the Bible, as the Bible says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Only that which is good that it may edify them. But you see, sometimes maybe certain people, they have uh, corrupt communication. Withdraw from those kinds of people because your number one priority is to guard your thought life at all costs, the Bible says in Proverbs 4.20. 
at all costs, for out of it flows the forces of life. Out of it flows the issues of life. It's a river of life, so guard your heart. Guard it with all diligence. You know, um, the fiery darts are not the circumstances that you're going through. That's not the fiery darts. The fiery darts is those thoughts that has a tendency to bring you down, that has a tendency to discourage you. So I want to encourage you this evening, control your thought life so, you'll continue, so you can keep your peace. You know, the Bible says in Psalms 139 and verse 23, Search me, O Lord, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in, in the way everlasting. The Bible says the thoughts of the wicked are in an abomination of the Lord. So he says, we just got through reading what things so ever is good, lovely, honest, good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. See, you win and lose battles every day in your thought life. If you, if you think you are a, a defeated foe, then you will be a defeated foe. If you say you can't make it, then you won't make it. You need to have a different vocabulary. I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. In order to have the right kind of vocabulary, you have to hear the right kind of thoughts, the right kinds of words. You know, the devil comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. He's looking for those that has no knowledge of the Word of God. He'll give you all kinds of thoughts. He'll say, well, God is doing this to you. God is training you through these things. Well, we may, we may learn through these things, but God is not the one that sends these storms to you. So don't listen to the lies of the devil. The devil comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. Jesus says, I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. So get his thoughts. For well, God says, my, my ways are not your ways. Neither your thoughts, my thoughts, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, then are my ways and my thoughts higher than your ways, your thoughts. So what he is saying, my way of thinking or my way of doing things is not your way of doing things. My way of thinking is not your way of thinking. So we have to get to the Word of God and li listen to God's thoughts. Amen. I read that. I quoted that in Isaiah 55 verse 8. Let me read it to you. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Well, what is God's thoughts? Well, Jeremiah 29 verse 11, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil to give you an expected end. Now, since we're talking about the battleground of the mind, all that we are, listen, is the result of what we have thought. All that we become is what we think. As a th man thinks in his heart, so is he. You got to think positive. You got to be an optimist, not a, a pessimist. No matter what things look like, you can say, I will overcome this. It doesn't matter what it looks like, but I will overcome this. See, if you change your thoughts, you change your world. I'm not talking about the world as a whole. I'm talking about the world that you live in. If you, if you don't like what you're living in, you can change those circumstances. Begin by thinking the right things. You know, uh, if you change your thoughts, you will change your world. You know, you are today where your thoughts have brought you. Now, I'm just giving some thought blocks to think about, some things to think about, the thoughts. You will be tomorrow where your thoughts will take you. Think good about yourself. Big, have big dreams. Think about success and how God will take care of you. Don't spend all your time, whoa, what I have been going through. It's been tough, you know. You got to guard your thought life. You know, I had a man came off. It's been, uh, it's been a while back. And uh, he's talking about how bad it was out in the world. He said, man, it sure is bad out there. It's bad out there. 
I uh, mean, this virus is just, it's just bad. And I said, well, I, t- I tell you what, and, uh, but uh, I got that inside information. God says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I will take sickness and disease, a disease away from the midst of thee. I don't, I don't care what, what's going on. I will be protected. Oh, yeah, that's, then he got encouraged. The Bible says a good word, do a good life of medicine. Think on the positive side. It's going to be all right. Amen. No plagues will enter your dwelling. Amen. Now, man's greatness lies in the power of his thoughts. Amen. Don't you like being with someone that's always positive? That encourages you. You're thinking, my goodness, I can be that way too. So be positive. That means walk in faith. Have a different mindset. Language is called the garment of thought. Let me say that again. Language is called the garment of thought. The reason why many people are depressed, discouraged all the time is because of what they think. They think the worst of every situation. They have something bad to say about every circumstance. Always speak the word of God, such as though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. So therefore I'm comforted because I have that inside, and you have that inside information. If we understood the power of our thoughts, we would guard them most closely. If we understood the awesome power of our words, we would prefer silence to almost anything negative. If we understand the power of our words, words begins with thoughts. So the reason why a lot of people talk negative and unbelief is because lack of word produce corrupt communication. So I want to encourage you to spend more time in God's Word. That's why the Bible said, My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life to them that find them and help to your flesh. You know, if our thoughts and, and words, if our thoughts In words, we create our own weaknesses and our own strength. Our limitation and joys begins in our heart. When you wake up in the morning, it's the day that God has made, and you're going to rejoice and be glad in it. So therefore, expect your day to be successful. It may not be what you want it to be, But believe the best because God says that he'll take care of you, he'll watch over you, and he'll supply your every need. Guard those thoughts and begin to believe it. See, your life is a reflection of your thoughts. If you change your thinking, you change your life. I'm very convinced that people are going to have longevity. I believe people can live long on the earth if they will guard their thought life and their confession. Amen. The Word of God says death and life are in the power of the tongue. The changing of your life is in the power of the tongue. The changing of your circumstances is in the power of your tongue. And what is in the power of your tongue is your thoughts. Guard your thoughts of what you say. You can have what you say. Believe the best. I'll always say it. I've said this for years, and I'll always say it. My wife and I, we say this all the time. We're going to live a long time on this earth. A long time. We have always say that. We always say, well, I, we have the right place at the right time. Our little Jonathan, when he was only about four years old, I remember uh, he was uh, in our car, and me and Charlotte was driving, and and there was a little ac- accident up there, so we had kind of wait. And, and uh, he was only about four years old, and, and we, passed the, we passed the traffic that was going on there. And, and Jonathan, only four years old, he said, we're at the right place at the right time. See, they learn, they hear you say that. I'm very convinced. If I hear someone's going through, uh, going through a cancer, I'll always back it up. Me privately says, I will never have cancer. 
I'll never have this. And whatever the enemy tries to put on me, I always overcome it. And you can too. Amen. You can always overcome it. You got to think right. Brother Hagin has a book called Right and Wrong Thinking. If you don't have that book, get that book, Right and Wrong Thinking. What you think about the most really will be your Lord. You think about success, you'll be successful. So therefore, to think bad thoughts is really the easiest thing in the world. It's easy to think bad thoughts. You know, if you live, if you live your mind to itself, it will spiral down into ever-increasing unhappiness. If you let your mind control you without the Word of God, you, can, you won't be happy. Uh, to think good thoughts, however, requires effort. This is one of the uh, things that discipline training is all about. You've got to train your thoughts. See, you are in control. You need to be in control of your thought life. I know the Lord told me one time in prayer. He said, if you take control of your thought life, then I'm in control. See, God cannot make me think good things or bad things. God is not the author of, he doesn't control my thought life, but I let him control. See, I've got to control my thought life. That's why the Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Control your thought life. Now listen, you have power you have never dreamed of. You can do things you never thought you could do. There are no limitations in what you can do except the limitation of your own mind. Men are not prisoners of fate, but only prisoners of their own mind. Remember, happiness doesn't depend upon who you are or what you have. It depends solely upon what you think. Your thought life is the beginning of your success or failure. The intake of what you hear will determine the kind of thoughts you will have. Thoughts that are not spoken will die unborn. The amount of peace that you have is determined by how much your mind is stayed on God. So you have to guard your thought life. During the times that we're in, you have to guard your thought life. I, I want to encourage you, the less media you can listen to, the more peace you'll have. Because you just so much stuff going on. Make sure you verbalize only those words that were edify and built up. Even when it comes to worry, Jesus talks to us about our thought life. Matter of fact, it is so important there in Matthew 6, 25, the Bible says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Now, how do you take a thought? You take a thought by saying. That's how you take thoughts, by saying it. What you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body. What you shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his statue? So therefore, verse 31, therefore take no thought, saying. Take, how do you take that thought? By saying it. You, you will have some thought, but you just don't, you know, some people, they speak their mind. Don't speak your mind because you speak words that will hurt. You know, you've heard this, sticks and stones may break my bones. Well, words would never harm me. No, I, words is more painful than sticks and stones. Sticks and stones, you can probably get healed and get over that. But words is hard to get over until, until we learn how to take authority over those bad seeds that's been planted inside of you. So make sure you receive the right kind of seed. See, every thought, every seed sown or allowed to fall into the mind and to take root there produces its own. Good thoughts bear good fruit. Bad thoughts, bad fruit. So choose you this day what you're going to think. Don't speak and talk to people of what you think about. If you know bad things of people, 
If you know bad things about people, don't spread. Don't spread those bad things. Protect, protect people. Help them to protect their thought life. Don't give them bad things to think about. Amen. The Bible said don't spread discord. Because discord hurts people. So therefore, be careful for be careful for nothing. Even when it comes to worry, don't worry. There in Philippians 4, verse 6, be careful for nothing. In other words, don't worry about anything and nothing be anxious. Have no cares. Do not over, do not be over anxious about anything. The Bible says there in 1 Peter 5 and 7, casting all your care upon him. The Amplified Bible says, casting the whole of your care, all your worries, all your anxieties, once upon him. Why? Because, because he loves you. He cares for you. Don't worry. God will take care of you. He's got this. You know, uh, Ephesians 4, 27 says, give the devil no place. Give him no such room. Don't give him any space. Because if he, can, if he can just get you thinking his thoughts, he'll defeat you. The devil cannot defeat you. Now listen to me. The devil cannot defeat you, you or me. All he can do is deceive us, and we defeat ourselves because of what we think and what we say. Remember, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Or... Direction is in the power of the tongue. Peace is in the power of the tongue. So therefore, guard your thought life. Guard what you say. The message Bible says, don't give the devil that kind of foothold in your life. Maybe some of you have been thinking bad thoughts about your leaders. Maybe you're thinking bad thoughts about your brothers in Christ. Or maybe you've been having bad thoughts about your church, about the government. Whatever you do, don't go s spread all those seeds out. Sometimes it's best just to be quiet and you pray to God and quit planting bad seeds about all these people. Just pray. Amen. God's Word translates says, don't give the devil any opportunity to work. Don't give him place. Don't give him opportunity. Guard your heart. It is so important. The Darby translation says, neither give room for the devil. The Weymouth translation says, and do not leave room for the devil. Now, Psalms 8 and verse 4 says in the New Living Translation, it says, you gave them charge. When he, when he made Adam, when God created Adam, the Bible says that you gave them charge over everything you made, putting all things under their authority. The message Bible says, you put us in charge of your handicrafted world, repeated to us your Genesis charge. Now, you and I, we need to continue to take control of our thoughts. I, like I said one time when I was praying, the Lord says, son, as long as you're in control, I'm in control. As long as, you know, people say, well, God's in control. Let me tell you what, I'm not trying to be kind of crazy here, but, you know, if God was in control, man, he's got this place in the mess. No, God is in control of the body of Christ. We as a whole take control of the circumstances. And the Bible says what you bind is bound. What you loose is loose. What you imprison will be imprisoned. What you allow will be allowed. So, therefore, we have that God in authority. We've got to think differently. Quit blaming God for all these things. The Bible says, give the devil no place. God says, my people, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. What, listen, what is the, res what is the results of knowledge? The right kind of thoughts. Thinking right. God says, my people are destroyed because they think wrong. They think wrong because they hadn't heard the truth. And they heard the truth, but they rejected it. So guard your thought life. The devil is not in charge of your health. You are. Take control of your thoughts. Start thinking that. He is not in control of your finances. You are. Be bold with this. God is not in control of your destiny. You are. You choose life. 
I call heaven and earth to set this day against you that I have set before you life and death, the blessing and curse. Therefore, choose. That means if you choose, that means you're in control of your thoughts. You choose. God's not going to make you serve him. We choose to serve him. That means we're in control. He is not in charge of your marriage. You are. He is not in control of, of, the devil's not in control of your business. You are. The devil's not in control of your life. You are. Now, God is in control if we give him our whole heart. The devil's not in control of your family. You, you are. You are. You're in control with God. The devil's not in control of your dreams. You are. He's not in control of your thought life. You are. To win battles, you must have a vision. Do you see yourself weak or strong? Do you see yourself poor or rich? Do you see yourself in bondage or free? Whatever the mind conceive and believe, the mind can achieve. So God is in control to a certain point. Now there's some things, regardless of what you do, or what say, God's in control. You can't change some things. God's got things fixed. It's going to fix. Amen. It's going to be done His way. Jesus will come again. You can't stop that. He's coming in. There's so many things. But in our personal life, there's things that God has given us charge. So therefore, we've got to be in control. So therefore, I want to encourage you and to, to control your thought life. And I hope that I've said some things that will bless you. Start thinking right. Start talking right. And ask God to forgive you being negative. Being negative. Just focus. Instead of being critical of the government, I think it's best we start speaking well and say, well, it's going to be all right. We believe in God. God's going to take care of this thing. We believe in God. Do all you know to do. Repent and serve God and, and let God be God. Amen. Well, thank you for tuning in this Wednesday evening. And uh, I'll tell you what, we're having a good time. Uh, the doors are always open to the in-house church. Like I said, I'm coming to you uh, in our Fusion building uh, today. And, and uh, I want to remind you that we are still, praise God, and we have some great uh, things coming up. And, Matter of fact, we have uh, Pastor Kenny Gatlin coming in very quickly. Pastor Tony Cowan's coming in. Pastor Eddie Smith coming in. And also we have uh, the Mr. Universe going to be uh, giving his testimony here at Livingwood Church on June the 27th, Mr. Universe of 8, 2018. This man is on fire for God, and you've got to be with us on that. That's June the 27th. Go to livingwoodchurch.faith and, and uh, check our events there. If you want to know what's going on, check the events. You'll see these speakers lined up who's coming in. Well, praise God. Thank you for your financial support. We love you. Remember again, you're the, see, this is what you think. You're the head, not the tail. Above and not beneath, you cannot be defeated. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Whom he leads, he feeds, whom he guides, he will provide. This is Pastor Moss coming from our Fusion Youth Building. Love you. God bless you. Have a good evening. Thank you for watching Living Word Church online and being part of our eFam. If you joined us on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. And if you joined us on Facebook, please like the page so you don't miss any future events or services. There are a couple ways you can support this awesome ministry. One, by sharing this video with friends and family and getting the word out. Two, by making a financial donation by clicking the Give Now button. This will help us to continue to support our community and do all God has called us to do. Thank you again for watching. God bless.